Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. Today on Manifest, we are with our main tour, which arrived here in Israel, and we're at the Sea of Galilee. It's a, it's a little overcast day, but it's a lot cooler than it normally is, which I like, to be honest with you. So we have about 270 people in a beautiful uh, church. There's a Roman Catholic church up on the hill, and we the, the, the sisters are so kind to us every year. And uh, we're going to take something very different. I want, I want you to give me your attention while I explain what I'm going to do. I have a white notebook, which is rare. I usually have a blue piece of paper. We have a partner's ministry in which our partners on the Partner Strike Force receive from me every morning, and they, they, can, they can view it, a video called Nuggets with Perry. I give a nugget in 60 seconds to 90 minutes. Now, when Tiffany James, who's our partner's director, was with us, we did not get to do the Sea of Galilee. I was having a little bit of throat trouble, and we didn't get to do it. So I'm going to do something that's pretty cool today. I'm going to give you probably 10 to 15 nuggets that are exclusively for partners. Hello? Yes. Thank you, Brother Perry. Thank you, Brother Perry. Yes. And, and then that, that way you can, you can kind of see how the Lord just these, these one-line things. Now, we're, I call this Lessons from the Sea of Galilee. All right? So we're going to go through these, and I don't know how many I'm going to get. I may not get to 15 because you know me. I elaborate and get on rabbit trails all the time. So Matthew chapter 14, 30. When Jesus is calling Peter to walk on water, Peter begins sinking. And as Peter is sinking, Jesus is still above water. So the lesson here is, what is over my head is under his feet. I like it. I'm starting to feel something already. Okay, now think about this. So in your lifetime and what you're dealing with, what overwhelms you and appears to be taking you under is already under the control of Jesus. Amen. It's already under his feet. And in, in Romans, Paul said, the very God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. So if we are a part of the body and he is the head, that means we are a part of his feet. And if we're a part of that feet in the body, then everything that the enemy tries to do to us, when he tries to sink us in the storm, it's always going to be under the feet of Jesus. Okay, that's a nugget. Here's nugget number two. We get this from Mark chapter 4, verse 25. <laughs> you ready? You can't go under for going over. What does that mean? Jesus said to those disciples in the boat, let us go over to the other side. He did not say, take me to the other side. I will go over to the other side. That would be singular, talking about himself. Us is plural personal pronoun, which means Everyone he's talking to is the us. So as they get on the boat and as they head toward the other side, a storm hits. And the Bible even says in one instance, the boat is filled with water. Now, how, let me say something. If a boat gets filled with water, it should be what? Sinking. Sinking. Do you know why Jesus can have a boat that's full of water that doesn't sink? Because he had a word. And that word was, let us go over to the other side. So here's the point. When you have a promise, I'm going to say it this way, you can't drown a man who's walking on a promise. You can't drown a man who's walking on a promise. So in other words, when, when Jesus said to Peter, come, it's one word. Now, we don't, he probably spoke Syriac Aramaic when he said that, and I don't know what that word would be in Syriac Aramaic. We translate it into the Bible as just one word. But when Peter is walking on the water, he's actually walking on the word. So in other words, Peter is not going to drown because Jesus is on the water with him. So you cannot drown a man or a woman or a church or a ministry that absolutely has a word from God. When Jesus said, let us go over, no storm is going to stop the boat and no storm is going to sink the boat. The boat can get full of water, but it still keeps floating. Why? Because it's floating on a promise, and they all made it to the other side. Now, here's nugget number three. I get this from Mark chapter 4, verse 39. When he spoke to 
objects. I want you to notice how objects always obey Jesus. He could speak to the water, the storm would cease. He could speak to the wind, the wind would stop. He could speak to a fig tree and a fig tree would die. Uh, Joshua could speak to the sun and it would just hold its position. The earth would hold its position. So here's my word from the Lord. Here's a nugget for you. If the seas can obey his will, why can't we? I see no ears on that water. And it's an object. It's molecules. It's H2O. But when he speaks, the natural law of water shifts and changes when he speaks. And so I would say it to you this way. If a fig tree with no ears, if wind with no ears, water with no ears can obey his word, why can't you? Amen. And that's why the Bible says, he that hath ears, let him hear what the spirit is saying. All right, because you've got to have spiritual ears to hear. Now, I love this one. You know, and by the way, I didn't, I didn't read a book to get these nuggets. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just sitting in my office. I'm saying, speak to me. So these are nuggets. Now, once again, the, what, what you're hearing on Manifest today are nuggets that are reserved for partners only, but we didn't get to do these in Israel. Uh, we missed the Sea of Galilee, so you're going to get the benefit of some of these that what our, our partners would normally get. Here's a nugget for you that's watching. We're, we're preaching on lessons from the Sea of Galilee. Mark 1 and 35 is where we take this. If you'll notice, Jesus would arise early to pray. Now, there are some people that are not early birds. Tammy James is one. No, I'm just really scared. <laughs> I told her I was not going to pick on her. But Tammy gets, comes to work and she says, please don't make me do anything till I get my coffee. I'm an early, and how many of you are that way? Come on, you all know. So, Tammy, see, you got a whole crowd here that's with you. Uh, I'm the kind of person that I can get up at 4 o'clock. If I wake up, I can go to work at 4, I can go to work at 5, and I can go all day because my nature is made that way. But notice how it says, Jesus arose a great while before day to pray. And I thought about that. I love this. You go, this is a tweetable moment. Please give credit to whom credit's due. <laughs> you ready? I love it. I can't really say it. Look, listen to this. Seek him early and you'll find him all day long. Mm. Oh, Lord, something flew by when I said that. Something flew by when I said that. This, whatever, whatever is on your mind when you first get up will be the thing that stays on your mind most of the day. Have you ever noticed that? If it's stress, it stays on your mind. If it's what I've got to do and I'm just, you're depressed with it. If the Lord is on your mind when you first get up. So I'll say it again. Seek him early, and then you'll find him all day, all through your day. Now, this one has a little bit of a Tennessee twist to it, okay? This is from Matthew chapter 14, verse 29. And this is where Jesus is uh, on the water. And I gotta talk to you about walking on the water for a moment because this is interesting. Let me, let me backtrack, and before I give you the nugget, let me backtrack and share this with you. Okay, Jesus is... Okay, let's go. Let's 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 just set this up because when the disciples are in the boat rowing to the other side, and they look on the water and they see Jesus coming, they say it is a spirit, or it is King James says it is, it is a ghost. Now the reason they didn't recognize Jesus is he was coming in a form they were not familiar with. Many times, ch different churches have different rituals or style of services. If you are not familiar with, let's say, uh, charismatic worship, Pentecostal worship, they call it, where people are raising their hands and clapping, and you come from a background where you, you've never seen that, you will walk in and not be sure about what's going on because you were never taught. So in that, using that as an illustration, the disciples had never seen Jesus walk on water. Now, here's, here's why they were afraid. Mendel Noon, who wrote a book called Fishermen of the Sea of Galilee, stated that according to tradition in the time of Jesus, if a fisherman, and they all fish at night, by the way, okay, and they're rowing at night. If a fisherman sees what appears to be an apparition on the water, now follow me, it is believed by the fisherman, it is a dead fisherman's spirit showing them their boat's going to sink shortly. So, this is so funny. So there is a spirit on the water 
and somebody says, I think it might be Jesus. And Peter says, Lord, okay, that's an address, a formal address to Jesus. Lord, Lord, Master, if it's you, <laughs> bid me come. Now, here's my question. What if it ain't him? <laughs> so it's kind of a contradiction to call him Lord. He didn't say, Lord, bid me come. He said, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. And it, it always puzzled me. Why? Did Peter want to walk on water? This makes no sense. Is he like going to say, man, I really get to tell my kids and grandkids something one day. You know, I'm the only dude in world history that ever walked on water with Jesus. Why do you want to walk on water? I mean, if I'm on the boat, I'm on, I know he's coming toward me and I'm going to wait till he gets in the boat. <laughs> if Peter understood what she would have, the tradition, he'd say to himself, if this boat's sinking, I'm stepping out of it and going to the guy walking on the water. <laughs> Did y'all just get that? <laughs> Now, I'm not adding to Scripture. I'm just saying if he knew that tradition, maybe he's felt like it's safer out there than it is in here. All right. The interesting thing is Jesus says one. Now, our English translation says Jesus said, come, which means get out of the boat. Come on, let's, let's go. And Peter starts walking on water. So I'm sitting there reading this, Matthew 14, 29. I love this. Here's another, here's another nugget for you. Ready? <laughs> this is just funny. One, I'm going to have to say it in Tennessee accent. Ready? One word from the sun will get her done. <laughs> you see, see what see the see the foolishness my partners have to put up with. <laughs> and so it's so true that that all you and I'm, I'm gonna elaborate on this for a moment before we go to some other nuggets. It's so true that when God gives you a word. It, there's Logos and there's Rhema. And I, I'm going to probably preach on Rhema with this group when we're here at some, at some real important location. But when the Lord gives you a word that quickens your spirit, the word is called a Rhema. A rhema. And it is a quickened word for a specific, particular situation for a specific time. I'm going to give you just an example, if I can, from our own life and ministry. Um, let me think. Several years ago, it's been many years ago now, um, I was uh, engaged to get married as a young man and broke off the engagement. And I'm, I'm standing in church in North Pole, Alabama in 1980 in the month of February. And the revival was extended beyond, it went four weeks. And I'm minding my business. And I had just broken up with a young lady. And I've got my mind on the Lord and I'm worshiping. And I'm looking at the youth group over here on the left side. And all of a sudden, I see a girl. I can tell you what she had on. She had black out, black dress on, skirt down to the knee. Ooh, holiness, hallelujah, glory to God. <laughs> you, you old timers will understand what I'm saying. It's, a, it's kind of an inside joke to the old timers, okay. She had long sleeves on, frilly, and this is Alabama, little frills here, little frilly neck, just really cute. And I don't, when, I, when I preached, I didn't, go, I didn't date girls in revival. My bishop, my mentors told me, don't do that. That's not good. So I just went to preach. That's what I did. I'd go out with all the young people. And so uh, I'm looking, and she's just over there, and I can tell you what color hair she had. She's just going. <laughs> and I'm just looking at the young people, and I see her on the corner, and I hear this. That's the girl you're going to marry. And it, 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 I heard it, and I went, Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Coming against me right now. I'm trying to focus on Jesus. You get out of my mind. And I really want, I just, and then I, I, I waited and refocused. And then I'm telling you what really happened. This happened just like I'm telling you. And so I'm looking around this choir singing now, and then and then and then I look again, and they're all standing up, and she's just over there. And the Lord says, "I said to you, the reason you broke up with the other girl is I had this girl for you. This is who you're gonna marry, bro." Listen, it went from my head to my spirit. You understand what I'm saying? No, it was it wasn't a, a mental thing then. It was a thing that was a rhema, and it became alive. And I said, "Oh my goodness, I don't even know her name." I mean, I don't know nothing about her, but Lord, I feel this in my spirit. I'm really feeling this in my spirit. So then they have prayer, right? I didn't have glasses back then. Let me take my glasses off. Hope it's not bothering me. <laughs> so I did, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, wow. And I, I, so I did the Bible thing, watch and pray. So I shut one eye to the congregation. <laughs> this eye was shut. So everybody thought I was praying. And, I, and that's when I could really see well with that glasses. And I went. <laughs> And I looked, and I looked, and I said, you know what? <laughs> I think I like that. <laughs> I believe that'll work. 
And, and what happened was when the Lord dropped the rhema into my spirit, and we're talking about one word from God, getting one word from God. When he dropped it into my spirit, I knew I'd marry her. I mean, I knew. Donna, can I tell a story? I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to embarrass you, but I got to tell this. This is a funny story. This is how real God is. Donna, who's been our partner's director uh, in times past at VOE, was a little girl. When I preached at North Cleveland, when I was dating Pam, how old were you then? Eight? Uh, ten. You were ten. And I stayed at y'all's house. Now, I don't want to embarrass, we're close. All of our family are like, see, we've been on all of our family. How many, how many people are in your family now? Like 32. 32 in one family. Okay. Her daddy married me and Pam. When her daddy was the evangelist director of Alabama, I was still dating another girl. And I go to Joe, Pastor, I just met him, Joe. He's the guy, he's the guy that got me to Northport. So I was grateful for him because that's where I met my wife. You with me? I'll track him. So I remember coming from Virginia to Alabama, and I remember this true story. It's real funny. I remember Pastor Joe, who was the events director. I went to the office. I said, you know, Perry, good to meet you, and this and this. And he, I said, he said, now, do um, you have any plans? Are you I said, I'm dating a girl from Virginia. I'm going to get married because the Lord told me I was going to marry her. Now, well, listen, let me just stop for a minute. All you young people, there's probably going to be five people you meet that you think the Lord told you you're going to marry them. <laughs> It's true. And, and, and it, obviously it wasn't the Lord, okay? But I got to tell you something funny about her sister because we're very close friends and Pam knows this story and we laugh. We've been on vacation. We laugh about this story. Was it, I think it was your dad who called Sheila and said, Sheila, look out the window. There's a young preacher about your age from Virginia and you might need to get to know him. I'm going to tell you a funny story. I shouldn't even be telling this on TV because it's going all over the world. <laughs> so when I stayed at North Cleveland, Sheila, who we became friends with Sheila, just friends, her mother said to Sheila, now, Sheila, you listen to me. You better get to know that Perry Stone because he's going somewhere. <laughs> he's going to do something big for God. And Sheila was dating a dear friend of mine named Ray Looney. And we now, we laugh and joke about this. Now, here's the point I'm making about the word from God. When I had the word from God about who I would marry, ain't nobody going to pull me away. No, really. Nobody's going to pull me away. And nobody can set me up with somebody. Nobody can make me go meet somebody. So this is what I'm saying. That's how significant a word from God is. That's how significant a rhema is. Because once you get it, it, you know it. It's just like, I am marrying Pam from Alabama. Come on, y'all leave me alone. Leave me alone. Back up, leave me alone. I got my woman. Come on, somebody, help me preach now. So I got married to Pam. We've been married almost 36 years now. I have two great kids. Another quick story. When the Lord told me to father a generation, he told me to buy property and build a gathering place for a generation. How would you like to have a building your building that's going to cost you $18 million dollars and you've only got four million in a building fund and no bank in town is gonna lend you money. That happened to me. I went to three banks and I got so provoked, not at the bank, but in my spirit, I said to Pam, you go tell the banks that God let me build one building and pay for it. God let me build a second building and pay for it. And you tell them, I said in the name of the Lord, I'll build this building and have it paid for before it's dedicated. Amen. Now, I don't know that she ever told the bank that and I wasn't being cocky. Let me tell you why. I had a word from God. You're going to find, oh, glory to God. Whew. You're going to father generation and you're going to build. So let me tell you, here's my nugget on that. Ready? God's will, God's bill. Watch out. Oh, watch out. Watch out. Watch out. No, and I, and I kept saying, God, I'm not doing this to do it. This is your will. And if it's your will, you got to pay for it. Amen. And I don't want to go into the details. We did not know it was going to happen, but we had a charitable trust, an anonymous person connected with the charitable trust. And I needed millions. So what we did, we started praying. God, awaken the spirit of a millionaire. Awaken the spirit. There's money that belongs to OCI. I don't have the money. I'm not going to beg. I'm not going to plead. I'm not, I, my partners don't even get donor letters from me. I have, where's my partners? Have I ever sent a letter asking for money ever? Never. Ever. No. We don't do it. We trust God. And an anonymous person through a charitable trust in three years gave our ministry $11 million. 
We didn't know it was coming. We didn't know it was coming. And so my, my point is, when you have, like, let me go back to the nugget, one word from the sun will get her done. When you have that quickened word and it's burning in you and nobody can pull you away, it's, like, it's almost like if the Lord tells you to marry a person and it doesn't look like it's working, but you got a rhema, don't fuss and fight. Sit back and say, hey, God, you're going to work it out. I'm, I'm chilling. I'm moving on. I'm going with God because you're going to have to work it out. And just live your life in faith, believing that time will come, that God will bring that person into your life. Or if you're pastors, if you're building a church and you know you're supposed to build it, you go for it. You go and trust God. Whatever it is that God is telling you, remember, Jesus said one word, Peter stepped out of the boat. Don't step out of that boat till you first get that word that burns in your spirit. Then you know, hey, it's like people sometimes will move to Cleveland and they say, we saw you on TV. We love OCI. We want to rate. And they have no job. They have no home. You need to be like the, the spies and go spy the place out and get set up before you move. Hello, I'm preaching to somebody now. Know what you're doing first. Get a plan. Joshua didn't just say, hey, let's go take Jericho. Woo. He waited till he got a plan. Get a plan first before you make decisions. Get plans before you move. Check out things before you make a decision. That's wisdom. You may have the word, but the timing might not be right. But when God begins to open doors, you see doors begin to open. Then you understand, now is my time to step in. Now, what we've done, check out the page. See here, here's part two. Here's part three. We only got to part one. I warned you <laughs> before I started this program that I am a rabbit trail man. But I hope, I hope that uh, you've received this. And Don, I didn't know I was going to do that, by the way. So text Ray and Sheila and say I'm going to talk about them on the program, okay? <laughs> so this is a great family, great friends of ours. We appreciate them being with us. But thank you for joining me on the Manifest Telecast. It's a beautiful trip. If you ever get a chance to go with us, please do. These, how many have never been here before? This is, how many of this is, whoa, stop, stop. <laughs> how many have never been here before? Raise your hand. Do you realize that's like 95% of this crowd? Oh, these are the rookies. We gonna have a good time. <laughs> these are the rookies. We gonna have a time. <laughs> Bless him, Jesus. <laughs> Look, we, you've not been with me when I've not been on the telecasters preaching. You ain't been with me in my comedy mode or my off the beaten path mode. It's crazy. We're going to call it a crazy tour to the Holy Land with Perry Stone. Okay? But, but thank you for joining me. I hope this inspires you today. I hope we gave you a word that you can use. And uh, just uh, stay tuned. What we do is we, we always have new material to keep the program on the air if you purchase it. And then we tell you where we're going to be. we got some great things coming up this year. I don't want you to miss it. So thank you, and God bless you. And how many of you are just glad to be here? Yeah. All right. Our new offer is one of the most important prophetic teachings in the history of Manifest. Hebrew expert Bill Cloud and I teamed up on this 10-hour teaching to unlock the mysteries concealed in Israel's seven festivals. This album has 11 DVDs that are 21 30-minute lessons. They include illustrated messages and charts and pictures to enhance the details of the research. On the first DVD, I explain God's seven appointed festivals along with God's prophetic calendar. Bill Cloud then shows you a complete Passover Seder and explains the mystery of unleavened bread, unlocking its prophetic purpose, including the revelation of the Messiah. I then follow up taking you on a journey to illustrate the prophetic layers found in the festival of first fruits. Bill presents the fourth festival dealing with the powerful significance of Pentecost and its impact upon us today. On DVD number six, I will explain the three fall festivals and how they are yet to be fulfilled, showing how trumpets and the different shofar sounds on that day encrypt the mystery of Christ's return for his bride and the resurrection of the dead in Christ. Then I explain the biblical and ancient temple rituals of the sixth festival, Yom Kippur, and how they detail the great tribulation judgments yet to come. On DVD number nine, See Bill Cloud set up a sukkah, walking you step by step through the practical and prophetic meaning of Israel's seventh festival, also known as the Seasons of Our Joy. 
Among the live audience, the most talked about DVD was lesson number 10, where I examine Israel's three biblical harvest cycles that prophetically conceal the rapture, the tribulation, and the millennial kingdom through the festival harvest patterns of ancient Israel. The 11th and final DVD will stir your spirit as I reveal God's plan to restore His glory to the earth in these last days. This teaching introduces to the viewer unique Hebrew word studies, fresh biblical insight, unusual Jewish customs, and exciting prophetic truth, helping you to understand the future according to God's festival calendar. It was preached before a live audience of ministry partners, and this teaching was originally designed as a Perry Stone Bill Cloud ISO Bible course that normally is $150. However, right now you can receive the 11 DVDs as a limited time offer in an album for your donation of $75 or more. To order your set, go online at perrystone.org, call toll free 1-888-21-BREAD or write the ministry and send your donation of $75 or more to Perry Stone P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee 37320. Now remember when writing or calling, use offer number 11DVD101. Help keep manifest on the air. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Don't you miss this fabulous offer. It's only for a limited time and you're going to learn so much you won't believe it. Watch your screen right now. This is where I'm coming to. Wednesday, May 1st, Bethesda Church in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. May the 3rd through the 5th, Griffin First Encounter Life Church in Griffin, Georgia. That's one of our big conferences. Wednesday, May 8th, Family Christian Center in Munster, Indiana. Then in Sum Sumter, South Carolina, Bethesda Church of God. And that will be May 31st through June 2nd. And of course, Redemption Church in Knoxville, where we go every year, June the 7th through the 9th. I hope that you'll be able to attend and drive in and join us in these great conferences. You know, there's something that's happening, and I'm, I'm saying this sincerely. I've been preaching now for over 40 years, and I believe that we're coming into the stages of a revival, and here's the reason why. The world is in such terrible condition. The nation is in crisis, uh, great divisions, and when these type of things happen, the Holy Spirit many times will sovereignly begin to move. We just concluded a warrior fest, and I want Charlie to put some clips up of this, where a total in two warrior fests of 8,000 kids came. And I, there were kids throwing drugs on the platform. There were kids throwing their habits like smoking on the platform. There were hundreds saved and hundreds baptized in the Holy Spirit. At the same time this was happening, Karen Wheaton had a ramp going on. It was packed. Tommy Bates had a youth meeting going on. It was packed. And all over the country, we're seeing young people begin to rise up in these last days and be empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't want me or you to miss what God is doing. And that's why Manifest is here to declare the end time message. Hey, I'll see you next week on Manifest. Perry Stone invites you to join him for his 2019 Israel tour. The dates are November 25th through December 4th with an optional visit to Petra in the country of Jordan. Call 1-888-321-3629 or visit perrystone.org for more information and how to register. Seating is limited, so call today.